गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन दिस इज़ द लास्ट लेसन ऑफ आर फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट इंटरनल फाइनेंसिंग एंड डिविडेंट पॉलिसी वट डू यू मीन बाई इंटरनल फाइनेंसिंग इज फाइनेंसिंग आउट ऑफ इंटरनल एक्रूवल्स आउट ऑफ रिजर्व इन सर्कलिस वॉट एवर प्रॉफिट यू हैव मेड वॉट डू यू डू टू दोज प्रॉफिट the profit which we have made some part of that is distributed as dividend and rest of the uh, uh, for example if you have earned 100 rupees in a year then you keep some 40% as a uh, 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 60% for yourself then 60 for yourself and you keep that into your balance sheet in the form of reserves and surplus you transfer it in the reserves and surplus and the rest of the 40 rupees you distribute as dividend so whatever profit you get you can take uh, you can distribute dividend out of it and the rest of the amount you can transfer it to reserves and surplus which is also called as internal accruals or internal financing lesson 11 targets at four topics management of earnings internal financing dividend policy and dividend models theories management of earning it refers to planning coordination and control of the capital employed in such a way as to earn regular adequate and increasing return on capital so manage your capital in such a way that you earn regular adequate and increasing return on capital it involves two decisions distribution of dividends and retained earnings again as i told you whatever you earn over a year you can distribute dividend out of it or you can retain that for your business dividend policy dividend refers to that part of the profit which is distributed among shareholders after execution of retained earnings so whatever uh, for example you have earned 100 rupees uh, as profit then what you can do is 60 rupees you can keep it for yourself for your business and 40 rupees whatever is left this is called as dividend which is to be distributed among shareholders dividend policy determines the dividend of earning between payment to shareholders and retained earnings now what are the types of dividend on the basis of shares there are equity dividends and preference dividends equity dividends are the dividends given on preference equity shares and preference dividends are the dividends given on preference shares on the basis of mode of payment cash dividend when dividend is given in the form of cash it is called as cash dividend when it is given in the form of stocks or shares it is called as stock dividend like bonus shares when it is given in the form of bonds it is called as bond dividend when it is given in the form of some property it is called as property dividend or if multiple modes are used then it is called as composite dividend then on the basis of the time of payment interim dividend regular dividend and a special dividend regular dividend is a dividend which is paid um, and by the end of the year when uh, your final uh, balance sheet is made and finally you come to know that how much profit you have made and then you make certain percentage of that profit as dividend interim dividend is when you make in somewhere in middle of the year uh, <clears throat> maybe 6 months then special dividend is a dividend which is um, because something special has happened some uh, good profit has accrued to the um, company because of some good project then you want to distribute some part of that profit to your shareholders and then you can distribute special dividend so these are the types of dividend now nature of dividend policy tied up with retained earnings your dividend policy is tied up with retained earnings the more you distribute your dividend the less amount you will have for the retained earnings now constitutes most imp- most important area of decision making and problem solving for finance managers it is very important area because it decides how much of your profit you are going to keep it with yourself and how much are you going to dividend uh, uh, distribute it to shareholders so that your shareholders will be very happy to receive those dividends and impact on shares definitely it has impact on shares um, there are uh, in um, if you distribute more of dividend and your dist um, uh, your shareholders are happy that you are distributing dividend and definitely it will impact the price of the shares optimal dividend policy then you should have optimal dividend policy where you should distribute a regular amount a regular percentage as dividend and you should also have enough of uh, retained earnings in types of dividend policy regular so some of the companies they do follow regular dividend policy they uh, distribute a regular amount into uh, as dividend irregular check the percentage keeps on changing stable 
there is uh, some stable policy that uh, okay this much amount is to be distributed as dividend and no dividend policy there are companies which may follow no dividend policy they may keep whole as retained earning because retained earning is very important because it helps uh, you to accrue internal financing for the projects uh, which uh, makes your uh, 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 company financially strong now determinants of legal pol uh, dividend policy what are the determinants first is legal restrictions there are certain restrictions related to dividend policy legal restrictions which should be complied with then the size of earnings whatever size of earnings you have now on that also dividend policy will determine will be uh, based investment opportunities and shareholders preference what are the investment opportunities we have some urgent uh, and very good investment opportunities and you may not distribute dividend and you may go for more for retained earnings and what is your shareholders preference that is also very important maybe your shareholders don't want dividend but they want cap capital appreciation and uh, you should not div distribute dividend and you should go more for retained earnings liquidity position also that is very important if you don't have liquid uh, with your hand uh, how will you distribute dividend management's attitude towards control what is the management's attitude towards control whether they want to uh, distribute dividend to their shareholders or not the state of capital market and access to it what is what is the state of capital market if, if everything is doing good in capital market then companies will also be very happy to distribute uh, uh, dividends contractual restrictions if there is any uh, uh, restriction between the shareholder and the company about uh, any contractual restriction about the distribution of share uh, uh, dividends profit rate and stability of earning what is the profit rate and whether these earnings are stable or not inflation inflation is also very important if you don't distribute dividend and you can just keep on keeping it with you and inflation is very high uh, i don't think uh, uh, your uh, shareholders will be happy so inflation is also one of the major factors so these are the factors which determine the dividend policy now let us go for dividend models theories the value of the firm can be maximized if shareholders wealth is maximized this is very important if the value if the shareholders wealth is maximized then the value of the firm is maximized according to one school of thought dividend decisions does not affect the shareholders wealth and hence the valuation of the firm so one school says that the dividend decisions do not affect shareholders wealth and hence the valuation of the firm the two schools of thought are as follows theory of relevance which says yes dividend decisions do affect the wealth of the, the shareholders and hence valuation of the firm then theory of irrelevance which says it doesn't so theory of relevance is a walters model and gordon's model and theory of irrelevance is traditional residual approach and modi gilani miller approach so these are the things there let us go for walters model it is a relevancy model it holds that when dividends are paid to the shareholders they are reinvested by the shareholders further to get higher returns the cost of dividend is called as the opportunity cost of the firm so if r is less than ke distribute dividends 100 percent payout if r is more than ke cost of equity then invest in retained earnings zero percent payouts whereas r is a rate of return and ke is cost of capital assumptions the firm finances all investments through retained earnings the firm's rate of return and its cost of capital is constant constant eps and dps earning per share and dividend per share the firm has infinite time so these are in walters model now if you look into walters uh, model formula then it is d that is dividend per share dps upon ep uh, upon cost of equity plus r that is rate of return on investment of the firm divided by cost of equity into eps minus dps divided by cost of equity so this is there if r is more than ke -E -E, then uh, growth firm the retain all earnings because uh, you're giving more return if r is equal to ke -E, then normal firm and r is less than ke -E, then it is declining firm distribute all earnings so this is about the walters model model it is a relevance uh, relevancy model let us go for gordon's model the bird in hand theory by gordon and litner
and the de- uh, the determinants of the value of the firm's cost of equity financing are the dividends the firm is expected to pay to perpetuity the expected annual growth rate of dividends and the firm's current stock price so what are the determinants of firm's cost of equity what will be the cost of equity of the firm in the market that will be uh, <clears throat> uh are the dividends the firm is expected to pay the expected annual growth rate of the dividend and the firm's current stock price according to this model the market value of the share is equal to the present value of the infinite future streams of dividend to be received by the shares so what uh, normally we do is what is market value of the share today is uh, the present value of infinite future dividends whatever dividends you are pay you are going to pay in the future if you discount those dividends to the present level you will get uh, the market value of the share according to this theory in assumptions uh, all equity firm there is no debt no external financing constant return constant cost of capital perpetual earnings no taxes constant retention so uh, there is no uh, uh, the, the return retention is constant cost of capital greater than growth rate so your cost of capital is the growth greater than growth rate the gordon growth model uh, firms try what they are doing is this is a dividend d not is dividend and in first year it will be 1 plus g uh, because the g is the growth and uh, ke is the uh, cost of equity and it is simply a uh, uh, model can be simplified algebraically if you apply permutations and combinations you get over here is uh, your p not is market price per share is d not into 1 plus g one g is the growth rate ke is the cost of equity and again g is the growth rate so d not into 1 plus g upon ke minus g uh, this d1 is nothing but uh, d not into 1 plus g so d not into 1 plus g d not is the dividend per share and um, the dividend paid uh, recently and uh, ke is the cost of equity and g is the growth rate in the dividends so this is a gordon model growth now traditional residual approach it holds that the dividends paid by the firm are residual of the firm after the firm has retained cash for all available and desirable positive and pv projects so what this uh, approach says that uh, dividend is something which is paid only if uh, after the firm has already kept aside the cash which is required for the positive and pv projects then dividend payment is useless as a proxy in determining the future market value of the firm so dividend payment doesn't actually determine the future market value of the firm the firm should never forego desirable investment projects to pay dividends uh, the uh, so according to this approach the first priority of any company or any pro, uh, firm should be to hold the investment projects and if something is left after holding that invest those investment projects then only they should distribute dividends because it, dividends don't affect the market value of the firm Uh, investors do not care whether firms pay dividend or not they are concerned mainly with the prospects of the higher future cash flows which might lead to capital appreciation of their stocks and higher dividend payouts so investors do not care whether you pay them dividend or not it is only they are concerned as capital appreciation whether they will get good cash flows in the future and that will lead to higher stocks and higher dividend payouts so this is traditional residual approach now last approach modi gilani miller approach it holds that capital gains and dividends are equal in the eyes of the investors so if you give them capital gains and dividends they hold equal in the eye of the investors according to modi gilani miller and modi gilani hypothesis or mm approach dividend policy has no effect on the price of the shares of the firm and believes that it is the investment policy that increases the firm's share value so what uh, uh, according to modi gilani and miller what is happening dividend is not uh, the determinant of price of the shares the price of the shares determined by the investment policy of the firm the investors are satisfied with the firm's retained earnings as long as the returns are more than the equity capitalization rate so investors are satisfied if the retained earnings are giving them more than equity capitalization rate that is cost of equity what is an equity capitalization the rate the rate at which the earnings dividends or cash flows are converted into equity or value of the firm if the returns are less than ke then the shareholders would like to receive earnings in the form of dividends so if you are giving them uh, very straight forward modi glani and miller what they are saying is that uh, uh, um, 
investors are not concerned whether they are getting dividend or not they are more happy if you, you give them uh, uh, future appreciation uh, through your good investment policies and uh, if uh, you are giving them more than equity uh, if you are giving them return more than equity capitalization rate that is a uh, rate of convert uh, rate of investing somewhere else or rate of converting into uh, uh, equity shares then uh, they are happy so that is not a problem they are uh, ready to give up their uh, dividends in only in case if you are giving them good returns on their money and assumptions perfect capital market no taxes the firm has fixed investment policy and no uncertainty about future profits so these are the assumptions what is the formula for modi ilani and miller approach to calculate market price Modiglani Miller approach to calculate market price P0 is equal to D0 plus P1 P1 is a market price at the end and 1 plus KE so P0 is a market price per share in the beginning D1 is a dividend received at the end uh, D0 is a dividend paid recently and uh, P1 is M market price at the end and K is the cost of equity to calculate number of shares to be used M is equal to uh, it explains the investment required by the firm on account of the payment of dividend is financed out of a new issue of equity shares M is equal to I into E minus ND1 divided by P1 M is number of shares to be shoot I is investment required E is total earning P1 is market price at the end and N is number of shares outstanding now to calculate the value of the firm it is NP0 is equal to N minus M P1 minus I minus E divided by 1 plus KE N P naught is the value of the firm so uh, you need not remember all these things uh, you can remember whatever is required uh, and basics uh, but yes uh, if you can remember that is well and good now Modi Glani Miller approach what are the criticisms first of all tax differentials it is not that uh, tax uh, is same everywhere there is change in the taxes flotation cost always there is flotation cost which has been considered as zero transaction costs are there again there are transaction costs which are again considered as zero there's diversification so uh, uh, f um, um, the investor may like to diversify they may not like to invest in your own company uncertainty uncertainty is always there and he has assumed uncertainty as nil and financial signaling is also very important there are various signals which uh, market gives and it is not just about dividends and uh, uh, return so dividend and uh, uh, retained earnings so uh, this is all thank you we have come to end of the uh, um, this uh, financial management what i would recommend is uh, go through all these videos and uh, make all these as notes and easy try to remember what are the these formulas related to each and every model and uh, garden model modi lani miller approach they are very easy models you just need to understand them very well and if you have any can uh, any kind of doubt please give me a buzz thanks a lot i hope you enjoyed this session uh, thank you